Hey there, the Netricberg here. Hope you're doing well. So this is again another bit of a different type of video where I'm not covering my critique. I'm actually covering PFSense again, and we'll specifically be looking at intrusion detection and prevention on the PFSense firewall. Now I feel like this is one of the sets or features that actually complements my critique as well, because you can use my critique as your router and your PFSense as your actual firewall but this will actually showcase a big gap that you might have if you're just using a microtech and you're looking for that additional layer of security so please feel free to join me and see how we can configure our pf sense for intrusion detection and prevention this is going to be fun all right so let's start up our lab and i'll just navigate to my browser and while that's booting, let's just see, do I have internet access? Yes, I do. And this is connecting through a virtual interface to my virtual PFSense. And then from there, it's connecting to a virtual microtech for internet access out. So this is the PFSense now. It is version 2.6.0, the latest stable version. One thing that I want to point out before we start anything is make sure that you have enough resources available on your PFSense firewall. What I mean about that, the intrusion detection and prevention system, namely Snort that we're going to be using, is pretty memory intense. So if you are using maybe a smaller device that only has one gig of memory, then you might be running into some memory consumption issues because the device might just be stressed and you might have a slow and unresponsive firewall because of that. So just ensure that you've got available memory before you start this. I do suggest most likely two gig. That is what I initially tested on and that worked fine, but that pushed my memory usage up to about 70%. So I just knocked this up to four gig in my instance now, and I think this should be more than enough um, memory for Snort. Now to get Snort, first thing we do is we can just navigate to our system and packages or the package manager. And from here, we will just go to the available packages. And the first time around, I found this by just typing in IDS and it showed me these two different packages. There is namely Snort that we are obviously covering in the video. And then there is something called Suricata. So I've never worked with that either. And I'll probably make a different video on it once I've actually installed it and tested it out. But I know Snort now, so we will use Snort. One thing I highly recommend is just opening up this hyperlink in a different tab and just reading through it because this will in essence explain what IDS and IPS is. And it will also give you the configuration process. So this is what I learned how to do it from, is from the documentation. So please follow the documentation if you struggle with anything. I will put a pin comment for it, just in case. But let's get started. I'll click on the install button. I'll say confirm. And now the Snort package will start downloading and installing on my machine. So let's just wait for this installation to finish. It might take a... 30 seconds to a minute, but this depends on your machine, obviously. Now, this was really, very quick for me now. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. If you have slow internet or maybe a fully utilized firewall, it might take a little bit longer. Now, where do we actually get to Snort? We can get there by going to the services and going to Snort. Now with Snort, there's a few things that you need to understand. You will be setting interfaces that you're going to be snorting or be monitoring in essence. Um, you've got your global settings that you need to set. And there's a bunch of stuff here. There's stuff like your updates. And as you can see, uh, nothing is enabled here. Nothing is actually running. So this is a pretty clean install right now. It's not actually doing anything. So let's get it to do some stuff. And I first suggest doing some tweaks with the global settings. So first you will enable your Snort VRT. Now, what is this? This is in essence going to be the rules that you're going to be downloading from the provider, from Snort. So if I click here, it will download the, the rule sets. It will ask you for an Oink master code. And this you can get by going onto the Snort website. So you can sign up for a free account. And the free account, the rules that you get, they are relevant, they, they still work. You can do IPS and IDS with them. They're just a bit outdated. I think it's like 30 days. So that means any new type of vulnerability that comes out within that 30 day period, your IPS might not be able to pick up and act upon it. And for that, they actually have paid for services where you get, uh, I think, individual licenses and you have business licenses that you can pay for 
Um, but let me just quickly log into my Snort account and I can show you how it looks and where you can potentially get your Oink Master key. Uh, let's just do this traffic lights. I'm not a robot thing. Oh, let me just agree to the license as well. Oh, I've already signed up. I'm, I'm being silly. Sorry, I followed the link. So let me just sign in. And once I've signed in, we can see there is an Oink code that you can go to. So this Oink code is what you will be copying into your uh, Snort configuration. I just want to navigate through the subscription so that you can see what type of subscription models there are. It is, um, my current plan is free since I'm just going to not use any of this, but you can use a personal or business model. And you can see there, if you hover over the information, it'll tell you uh, what it does and how it works. And in essence, I think this is almost a monthly charge. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's yearly. I'm, I'm hoping it's yearly, but um, just something to take note of. So it's about 30 USD for a personal license for two devices to get pretty up-to-date rules. Now, I'm just going to go to the Oink code, but this part of the video, I might just skip forward. So if you just see me skip, you know, don't, don't be too stressed. Um, but you can copy your Oink code, bring it to your firewall, paste it in, and then we can continue with the setup. Now, other things that I can recommend is you can set up the enable snort GPL v2, which is just the community rules. We can enable ET or external threats. So I'll click that open. There is an external threats pro as well, which is in essence going to work very similar to the snort license. So if you have an external threats pro license, you can click that and sign up for it as well. But that's obviously going to be some additional paid for services. Uh, we can enable the open app ID, which is going to just allow us to see what apps are being used. We can enable app ID open text rules. I, I might just add that as well. And here we can see we can do stuff like enable Fiodo tracker botnet C2 IP rules. So this allows us also just to see some stuff regarding botnet things. So we can potentially block that as well. Now with the rule rules update settings, we can in essence say how often we want to update our rules or fetch new rules from the snort server, so to speak. So your update interval, you obviously don't want to leave that at never because then your rules are never going to get updated. So I might actually update this either every 12 hours or every day. So I think every day is probably a good baseline for most uh, users. And now you can also set the update start time. So it, it happens at a very specific time at in, in the day. So if you want to run the updates, maybe at uh, 11 o'clock at night, you can do it this way. But if you leave it blank, it will just do it at every midnight, I think. We can also say that we want to hide depreciated rules. So I'll click that. You can disable SSL peer verification as well if needed. I'm not going to click that. We can set the general settings. So remove blocked host intervals. So what is this? Well, this is when the intrusion prevention kicks in where a host might be blocked based off of uh, activity. So maybe you have rules set to block things if they do stuff like a port scan against you, then they would go into a block list. And while they're, let's call it the naughty list, so while they're in the naughty list, you can either set it so that they can never leave so that you, you need to actually manually go remove them, or you can set it for very specific intervals. So maybe you can set it for 30 minutes or a day or something, but this is up to your preference. So please take note of that. And also one thing that might be a bit, I don't want to say dangerous with the intrusion detection or prevention is if you don't set your rules correctly and your monitoring interfaces incorrectly, then you might end up blocking your own IP from accessing the firewall. And then you're gonna have a very bad time because then you're gonna have to connect to a different machine to get back onto the, the firewall so that you can actually remove your old machine's IP. But there's stuff that we can do to get around that. But just something to be aware of, um, there is a naughty list and people that break the rules or get picked up by the system is going to go into that naughty list if specified. Um, here you can also set that if you want to remove blocked hosts after a deinstall, which just means if you remove the package and you had blocked hosts, that you want to remove them as well. Same for the keep snort settings after deinstall. If you uninstall snort or remove the package, then it can keep the settings for when you want to add it again so that you don't need to fiddle around with the settings too much. And then we've got the startup and shutdown logging. I, I won't enable that 
either, but you could in essence enable that. So that is the global settings. Let's look at the updates now. So the updates, this is obviously now the rules that I was talking about, or think of these as the signatures that we're going to download from our <laughs> provider to basically have the most current list to say what type of attacks are going to happen. So I can just hit on this update rules button and it will start the process of downloading the rules off of the internet. Now this can take a good few seconds or minutes, also depending on internet speeds, but it shouldn't take too long. I, I found that this was a relatively quick process. All right, so the rules have downloaded. We can see that they do have some hashes and we can see what date it was updated against. So now we know we have rules that we can actually use for our, <laughs> our system. Um, I'm just going to go through the other tabs quickly just to kind of explain what's happening with them. If you go to the alerts tab, this will in essence give you a list of all of the alerts that have occurred or what type of traffic has passed that has been snorted. If we go to blocked, this is where the blocked list will be. So here you can see which hosts have been blocked and the reason why they've been blocked. A pass list, I think this was in essence just going to be like a white list, so to speak. We've got a suppress list, an IP list. Uh, here's the system ID management uh, or the state ID management. We've got log management and we can sync some stuff. But in essence, you're really just going to be working a lot with the alerts, the blocked um, tabs. And yeah, that should be it. Next bit is we're actually going to add the interfaces and this is where the fun actually starts. So let's add an interface. And this is in essence going to be the interface that you want to be monitoring or snorting or applying the IPS against. So if you run stuff like VPNs as well, you might be wanting to apply it against those VPN interfaces. Um, if you, you can apply it on your WAN and your LAN at the same time, but I'm just going to, for this demonstration, I'm just going to apply it to my WAN interface. I can say I want to enable the interface, obviously. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. I've got a search method here. I'm just going to leave that on the default method. And here we got block offenders. Checking this option will automatically block hosts that generate a snort alert. So I'm going to take that. And then we get stuff like the IPS mode. So we have legacy and inline. And we can read about what each of them does. But I'm just going to leave it on the legacy mode. And which IP to block. Now this is very important. Because if you're setting this to automatically block offenders. And the IP that you want to block is both. That means that the source and destination will be blocked. So if a hacker is trying to get into your system, then the IPS system is going to block the hacker's IP, but it's also going to block whatever they were trying to connect to. So that might be a bit dangerous. So for this, I might just say, since this is going to be traffic that I'm expecting coming from the WAN, I'm going to say I'm going to block IPs that are being sourced. So I'm going to block the hacker's address in this case. Um, that should be fine. And I'm not going to tweak anything else here. So I will save the settings here. And now we've got additional options that we need to go to. So we can go to the WAN categories. And this is where we can, in essence, enable those rule sets that we downloaded, where I can just use IPS policy. And if I check this, it actually gives me this very easy um, policy list that I can just work with. Because if you don't use this, then you have this granular and modular control where you can specify exactly what type of uh, rule set you want to uh, monitor and look at. But as you can see, th there's quite a few here and this isn't just a rule. If you go into this, there's rules in this, <laughs> in this, uh, let's say signature that's being tracked. So I'm actually going to just say, I want to use the IPS policy. And now you can set it for whatever you want. You can set it for connectivity, balanced, or security. So this is like the easy mode way of how to do this. So I might just for the demonstration set this to security. But if this, if you're not too stressed about um, you know everything that's happening, then you can be a bit more relaxed. You can obviously fine tune the system and the signatures that you're actually monitoring a bit later on. But let's just start it off with security, and then I'll save this. And now that that's been saved. The IPS has kind of been configured, but I need to set my WAN rules as well. 
So available rule categories. Now here I can set that I am going to use the IPsec policy security. That is important. If I don't select that, then it's just using the default stuff. So I'm, I'm matching that category, category I added earlier. And here you can kind of see all of the rules that's going to be applied. Pretty neat. As you can see, there's quite a few. If I, if I scroll here, ah, oh, that's, that's a lot of rules. So this is going to take a while to just scroll through, but I will trust the system. So I'll just apply this. And then once that has been applied, I can just look at a few of the other tabs. Oh, sorry. I'm actually still waiting. There we go. So we can look at WAN variables. So this is some extra details that you can fill in, uh, but it's not needed to get the system working. We got WAN preprox. Um, auto rule disable. I think I've seen that we can use this if there is some type of depreciated rule that doesn't really function correctly, then the system can just kind of bypass it. So it doesn't cause any weird type of bug. So I will select that as well. And I'll just scroll down, check, is there anything else that I actually want to add here? This all seems fine to me. We're not going to add anything else here. So I will just save the settings. I'll look at the WAN IP reputation. So here you can actually also just enable IP reputation so that the system can also do a lookup at an IP's reputation. And then based off of that reputation, it can also in essence, do something. It can block traffic if it is having a bad reputation. You know, if people are like sending a lot of spam emails, <laughs> they'll get a bad reputation. And then this allows you to just kind of pull that information so that you can potentially stop those um, bad people from connecting to you. And here is the WAN logs. So the WAN logs, this we will actually see when we test out the IPS and then we'll see that logs are actually occurring. So there's nothing else that I want to do here. Um, let me just click save again. And then if we go to back to our snort interfaces, by default, it is going to be disabled. It's got this red cross. So to get this running, I can just click on the play button and it will enable the snort system against my WAN interface. So as soon as that green check is there, it means that the snort is running now. And in essence, I should be able to start seeing alerts and, and seeing stuff being blocked in essence. So I'm going to actually cause a little bit of an issue. I'm actually going to run a port scan using Kali Linux from the outside of this network so that it can get to that WAN address and potentially get blocked. Just what I want to explain with the firewall as well is I have implemented a one-to-one -one NAT rule where I've created also a virtual IP. So the virtual IP is 164.0.11 and that is being NATed down to my actual Linux machine or my Ubuntu machine that I've got this session open to the PFSense firewall. So this is 172.16.0.50. So I'm basically forwarding, let's say this public IP to my Linux machine, and I'm going to be running a port scan against that from Kali Linux. So let's just quickly get onto Kali Linux. I'll do Kali Kali. And let's just check here. I'm going to check, can I ping 164.0.11 that I can ping? So that's great. That means the host is reachable for me. So I, if I was a malicious person, I could maybe be trying to run some um, sketchy stuff like this port scan. I'm going to run against it now. And I just ran a port scan against that IP address of the firewall that's being natted down to my Linux machine. And before I check anything else here, I just want to go back to my Linux machine and have a look at the snort services and such. So let's go back to the snort and I'm going to go to my alerts and I'm not seeing any alert there. Let's actually go into the WAN interface and go to the WAN logs and check if I can see any alerts there. And I'm not picking up any alerts. So potentially I might have missed something with the configuration. So let's just quickly go through it because I was actually expecting that traffic to get blocked. Um, duh, 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 duh. Our WAN categories are set for security. That's fine. I actually think this is by default not going to get blocked. So what I might do is I'm just going to select all of these 
signatures as well. I'm just going to save that. And now with that signature rule set saved, I'm actually going to go back to my alerts. And then with the alerts, let's go back to Kali and actually just prompt that port scan again. And let's go back to Ubuntu. And let's just refresh here. And there I can actually see that an attack has occurred. So we can see that I, the IPS was actually working. I just think that um, predefined profile isn't said to be blocking um, stuff like these port scans from occurring. But here we can see that the port scan occurred. It actually picked up that it was attempted information leak, potentially bad traffic, and it could see uh, what the source IP is, what it was trying to connect to, what the destination ports were, and it's kind of giving you a description of what happened. So that's quite nice. The IP has picked up that somebody was trying to access my external IP and potentially doing something malicious, but just something to take note of. Uh, if you are applying this against your WAN interface and you do have a public IP, then there are a lot of like just port scanners running off of the internet by default. So it's not always that people are just trying to hack you or something. It's just the internet kind of works that way where even Google might have probes that's just like testing external IPs to kind of figure out what that IP is. So don't be too perturbed if you see people, like there is some type of port scans happening. But if you wanted to, you could just get rid of this by removing the SIDs here. But I'm going to leave this on because I wanted to prove to you that the IPS actually picks up that an attack has occurred. And also, if I look at my blocked list, it shows me that this source IP has been placed in a blocked list now. And the reasons kind of why it's been placed in a blocked list. So now that it's been placed in a blocked list, if I go back to my Kali Linux machine and I run the same, just a ping actually, let's see, can I ping that IP? The IP is unreachable now because the PFSense firewall has determined that this is a bad actor based off the rules that we set. So now it's going to be blocking this bad actor. Now that is actually freaking awesome. <laughs> I enjoy that. Um, let's go back to our Linux machine. And I actually think that is a baseline of how to just get started with Snort. There is obviously a lot more to just setting this up than what I showcased here now. And this is why I highly recommend actually reading through all of the documentation on the NetGate docs. Um, there's definitely going to be some additional information that you can pick up from there. And even from the community sites like the Reddit, where you might get some more additional information of how you can tweak your IDS slash IPS to just function in a way that you wanted to. But this is a pretty secure way just to get started and it works and the way that i made it work is totally free there's no catches i'm not paying extra money but i do highly recommend consider getting a license if you do find any benefit in it because it is obviously going to be a lot more secure and it also supports the people that work on this open source project that gets us to a state where we are securing our networks without having to shell out thousands thousands of dollars to just have this baseline functionality I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.